In this video, we're introducing the roastery part of the new April headquarters. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. As you can see, once again, we're in a little bit of a different setting than what we used to. Last week, we started by kind of showing you the first glimpse of what will become the April YouTube studio or whatever you want to call it. It's a work in progress. So is the place that we're standing in right now, which is actually the new roastery or production room uh, for April. So we're kind of excited to give you a little bit of glimpse in different environments of our new headquarter while we're building the new studio location, right? So as you can see, the sound is a little bit off, lighting is what it is, mainly because we're not in a studio, we're in an actual production site. And it's quite interesting and a little bit more fun for you guys to actually see the reality of, of what we're doing here, right? So getting the machine standing behind me here, lowering, um, lowering S15 Falcon, it's been a long process. And we're gonna walk you through a little bit in terms of how that actually worked, what to think about and what not to think about. So a little bit nerdier, a little bit more roasting focused than what we've been before. There's also tons of stuff that goes into a setup in a roastery that all has to be required and thought about in various shapes and forms, right? So I think one of the things we wanna point out is that there's been several different versions of the lowering machines since they first started, right? It's been both the different sizes, but also within the different sizes, there's been modifications. So what's standing behind us here is the latest version of it pretty much. And there's already here quite a few differences from the machine that we've been roasting with up until now um, at April. And the main difference here is gonna be drum speed. We have slightly different probe placements, so how we measure the different temperatures. And overall, it's just a little bit more efficient than what we had before, right? So we're already very happy with the result of the coffee that we're getting across the board. It's actually tasting a lot better than what we had before. So it's been a really interesting transition, a lot smoother than what we had before. So one of the things we did change with our setup here in comparison to the first one is that we went over to natural gas. Um, in opposed to, for example, tank gas that we used before or bottle gas. And the issue with bottle gas is that you have an inconsistency of the gas coming to the machine, which in theory shouldn't make much of a difference because you have a regulator on the machine that's going to decide the pressure that goes on to machine. So normally you have overpressure of gas and then a the regulator that kind of takes that down. But if you work with individual bottles, what happens is that they're going to freeze as the gas in the bottles are stressing. And eventually, and that happened quite a few times in a previous setup, we then got to have an issue with what we refer to as a flame out because we have a low gas pressure and so on and so on. So because of our current gas setup, that's going to be a lot easier for us. We're going to be a lot more consistent in general, and we've been able to actually calibrate the burner to be a lot more assist, uh, efficient. And then when you do a gas setup, it's really important to consider a bunch of different things really, but what it comes down to is how far are the pipes from the gas source to the machine, how many angles, and most importantly, what is the diameter of the pipe, the gas pipe leading from that source to that machine. It's basically just a bunch of math, which is not super complicated, but it's something that when you build a roastery, you have to be very clear with because especially working with a lowering, the requirements here are a little bit different from what, let's say, a standard Danish gas technician would refer to when it comes to a setup like this, right? So that's been an interesting process. On top of that, we're also adding, of course, electricity. Always interesting when you come into a new site. The location that we're sitting in at the moment is actually an old factory or old like food production facility. So luckily for us, they have a bunch of electricity already, so that hasn't really been an issue. And the last thing we need is basically water. Uh, so water on a lowering is basically just a safety issue. Uh, a few of the previous machines required air as well, but again, we have a slightly newer machine, so there's no internal compressor needed. So it's a little bit of a different setup, right? So overall, it's been an interesting process. It took us about three, four weeks of test roasting to come up with profiles that we thought worked in terms of how we like our coffee to taste. And then after that, we've been now basically moving into the roastery and for the last week and a half to two weeks, we've been running our production roasts in this very facility here, right? And there is a few other very specific things to the building that actually improves our roasting and the efficiency of the machine. 
Uh, if you look above me, there's basically um, exhaust pipe. So we see a cold stack and a hot stack. And the hot stack is the pipe that basically goes straight up. And the dimension of that, the sizing of that, the structure of that in Chersub, is it going straight up? Is it going, does it have any angles? How far is that distant? It's also going to have a big impact on the performance of the burner in general, right? So we're kind of really happy to have found a location that allows us to maximize all of the power that you can find in a lowering machine, right? Which is kind of why we work with them. And it's really interesting to see how different setups, different fan systems, different room pressures actually have a massive impact on the performance of that machine, right? Uh, obviously now being the setup that we own, we're now also able to modify whatever things we need to modify, which is quite interesting. And I'm sure we're gonna have a bunch more videos of that coming. Obviously being in this location now, it's gonna allow us to run a lot more roasting content as well. So we're really interested in what you might wanna see here watch from us when it comes to, are we looking at roasting? Are we looking at green coffee profiling, whatever, right? What do you actually wanna see from us when it comes to roasting? It's something that we initially did a lot of here at this channel and kind of gravitated more towards brewing. And now with the new roastery space, we hope to kind of merge the two again and do a little bit more roasting content. So this was just a little bit of a first view at the actual roast setup. This is what we're roasting on. This is where we are for now. And it's kind of a new April headquarters. And with that, we just want to thank you as always for subscribing, for following us on Patreon. That's where we have the kind of more in-depth conversations. And we're looking forward to bringing you a lot more roasted, roasting uh, content here at April. And we're also looking forward to continue to kind of show the process of building the new studio. Again, it's not going to happen overnight. So you're going to see a little bit of scattered content. I'm going to be out traveling a little bit as well and try to record some content there as well. So we've been seeing you guys all over the world pretty much. But with that, we just want to say thank you for watching and wish you a great day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.